Hi guys, hope you're enjoying Lightbox 2020 so far. Thank you so much for tuning in my demo. I'm Lynn, I'm a visual development artist who currently works at Warner Brothers Animation. Uh, during my free time, I really enjoy painting simplified characters with good mood and lighting. So today in my demo, I'm going to be sharing my process of taking this character from neutral lighting into three different lighting scenarios. I've already have this character designed and if you want to paint along, feel free to go on my Gumroad and download this PSD file. So in this file, you will find my sketch as well as um, the character painted in neutral color. We're going to start from here and painting three different lightings. One is daylight and then sunset and nighttime. Uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, feel free to paint along. I'd love to see what you come up with. So here I have my Cordy character. It's mostly in neutral color. Uh, before we start, let me talk about a couple things about my setup. Um, I don't use the color picker, the HSB color slider as much. What I do use is I have a shortcut um, to pull up the foreground color picker uh, that is key S. So if I push, if I press S, this color picker pops up. Usually it's set to HSB, you know, like it's brighter, darker, more saturated, less saturated. But what I find it's useful is if you put it on A, um, so now we have brighter, darker, go towards, uh, if we go towards left, that's cooler, and towards right, that's warmer. So it's a nice um, change from just like desaturated and more saturated, it goes towards um, cooler and, and warmer. So it really helps me with the color temperature. Um, for example, I have a, a gray cube here. So if I pick the color and I pull up my foreground color picker, um, let's say I want the brighter sunlight hitting it. So I will pick the sunlight that's warmer. So it's probably brighter and warmer. If I have, if I want to really intense intensify the color, I could even take this slider, go give it a little bit towards like red, add a little bit more warmth. So I have color like that and let's see the shadow side i want it to be slightly darker and slightly cooler let's go towards the left and we have a we have a cooler shadow it's not 100 percent accurate it's probably exaggerated but i find it's very helpful for me to find the color relationships local color um light color and shadow color but of course on top of this you could add a little bit um subtle color variation let's see if the shadow get a little bit darkness like here and then on the shadow side it's probably slightly darker towards the towards the ground. Of course, you could add a little bit of bounce light if let's say if there's sunlight hitting on the ground. It's a little bit brighter, a little bit warmer, maybe more intense, and then you have a little warmth on the side. So yeah, that's the that's the color picker I used to use. Uh, I I've been I'll be using a lot. Um, that's one thing, and the second thing is I do color proof my images using proof colors, um, command Y. But usually it's set up at CMYK. Um, I don't use CMYK at all. So what I do is I go on I go in a customized proof condition under device to sim simulate. I choose S gray instead of CMYK. Uh, generic gray profile, S gray, I think they're pretty much similar. I just remove all the colors uh, under this. So right now, if you hit Command Y or Control Y, um, it'll be toggle between your color version and uh, black and white value version. Um, so that really helps me to uh, identify if I have a good value structure, if I still have the 
um, the character silhouette read really well. So yeah, that's another thing I've been using a lot. Um, let's get started. Although we have three different lighting scenarios, the key component of the lighting um, is actually very similar. Um, we always have a key light and then a field light and then maybe the bounce light if the key light is very strong. For example, um, in the daylight situation, we have the cooler sky light as a field light and then we have the sunlight coming down as the key light um, and a little bit warm bounce light coming from the sunlight when it hits the floor. Um, similar to that, um, during sunset, we have a cooler, like a purplish, maybe warm um, skylight as a field light, and then the sunlight is actually very low, very warm. Um, during daytime, we also have the sky, um, gives out a little bit of a, like weak blueish, dark blueish kind of um, color. But you can design the key light um, as maybe a spotlight, maybe street light, whatever you like. And then you can even add, uh, add moonlight in there to um, have a little bit cool uh, field light coming down. Um, it's important to always design um, some warmth and some cool. So the, uh, the, the key light and field light, oh, it, it, it could always have some like, temperature changes so it'll give your more give your image more depth when we when i start painting i like to um, have the skylight as a background color um, that'll help me figure out the overall palette a, a little bit better um, so if the um the, uh, the the bigger tone has like a, a little bit cyan um this this overall feeling in there it helps me to decide how the field light is gonna affect my character so right now i'm just brushing a little bit um of the sky light color so um, when you paint light it's more like sculpting um you're thinking about the form um, for example, right now, I'm just trying to figure out all the faces that's facing upwards because that's going to get affected by the skylight the most. So I'm only thinking about the blue skylight where it's going to hit. And under the chin, it's going to be a little bit darker uh, because the light is hard to get down there. So it's going to be a little bit darker. And also the belly area because it's behind the bottle. It's going to be much darker because the light cannot bounce in there. So um, you have the little bit darker area. I tend to make the, um, the darks like the shadow area a little bit warmer just to give it a little bit more contrast with the cool skylight. Um, because of the length of the video, I had to speed up this uh, video. So each lighting scenario, it, it's pro it probably takes me about it took me about 40 minutes to an hour to, to get to it. And right now it's playing at um, uh, probably three times faster just to make sure I include everything here. But if you're painting um, your lighting situation, feel free to take your time. You don't have to rush. Now I'm painting in the bottle, like the darker area, I'm trying to make it slightly cooler compared to um, the local color. I like to get the, the trans 
transparent kind of feeling. So, if it's an empty bottle, you know, where it doesn't have milk, it doesn't have light reflection, it's just gonna show through what's behind the bottle. So that'll be my base color、uh, for this bottle. And the straw, I do use lasso too,、um, quite a bit. It helps me to get a clean selection. And right now, I'm trying to match up the、uh, the milk kind of color, trying to get the right texture. Because milk is not as transparent, so I think.、Um, When it's facing away from the sun, ah,、uh, it's gonna get darker, so it's less transparent, less translucent.、Um, while you're painting like more clear liquid,、um, how the light travels through the liquid will be slightly different. But it can show through a little bit of the straw. I think that helps to sell the texture. Right now, I'm painting in a little bit reflection from the skylight. That's the bottle、um, where the bottle is facing upwards. You know, cast a lot of the blue skylight. Now I'm designing, just trying, just just trying to make a mark and remind me where the sunlight is coming from. Now the grass, when it's、uh, when it's hit by the sunlight, it's gonna be a lot more warmer and a lot more brighter. So it can take a look at the reference picture and get the feeling of how 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 bright the the grass should be when it's hit by the sunlight. You, we could add some smaller grasses in front of the character too, so it sits better in the environment. Right now, I'm trying to add a little bit of、um, dappled lightings. Like we imagine this character is sitting under a tree, so there are, are、um, lights shining through from the tree leaves. So I add a adjustment layer of, so I just put、uh, I use the level as an adjustment la layer, and I made the layer much brighter, and then、uh, fill in the mask with black, so it doesn't show through yet. And right now I'm painting. In the mask,、um, with white color, so wherever you paint, it actually shows the effect of the level adjustment layer. In that way, you could control where you wanted the spotted light to be. Um, because I have the arms on different layer, I would just、uh, copy and paste. Uh, the adjustment layer on different、um, parts of the body and clip it, so I could painting the light separately. But if you're painting everything on a sing on a single layer, I think that'll be much easier. You don't have to copy and paste the adjustment layer. Sometimes it gets messy. And right now, I'm adding a little bit reflecting color from the grass. I don't think I was quite happy with the、uh, um, the sunlight. I was actually struggling a little bit because I didn't spend much time on it. I I know this adjustment layer method definitely works, and I've used it quite.、Uh, I've used it many times, but this time I feel like, yeah, I just couldn't make it feel right. So I was going back and forth a little bit on the lighting. But hopefully, it does、um, shows you the it 
首诗的 idea. Instead of painting in the sunlight directly, you could have an adjustment layer. So,、um, when you're painting in the mask, just use black or white to add in. The light or remove the light. You could easily control where you want the sunlight to be and make adjustment accordingly. Don't forget the flowers. Just adding a little bit of light. And when the sunlight hits the grass, it's gonna bounce off from the grass and hit the character,、um, like under the chin, that area. It's gonna be greener. So、um, remember, I was talking about the color picker I was using. I will just select the local color under the chin and then move the、uh, the picker upwards and slightly towards. Right, so it's slightly warmer. Maybe add a little bit green in there. Um, that's how you get this kind of greenish warm light. But that light actually, it's not green. It's just compared to um the shadow area under the chin. It shows, it feels a little bit greener. But it's like an overall like warm bounce light under the chin. Now we're adding a little bit more details on the bottle. And add a little bit more skylight on top of that. Bounce light on the flowers. Yeah, I think I still don't like the sunlight, so I was actually removing all the adjustment layer and just trying to directly paint it in. That works too. So either way, if you wanna try to use some adjustment layer to, uh, to make the lighting um more manageable or to just directly paint it in, um, you could try different ways and see which one works better for you. If you have any questions during during this demo, please let me know、um, on Discord. I will try to answer、um, any of the questions that's coming up. For the bottle texture, actually, I didn't use any reference.、Um, I'm just kind of guessing. But if you have some reference, definitely use the reference, and that'll give you a much better clue how the light reacts when it hits the like glass material. And that's our daylight version.、Um, yeah, I saved the file as a separate. As another PSD, and now we're starting the sunset version.、Um, instead of using the neutral、um, PSD,、um, I just kind of try、uh, use the same file in、uh, removing all the painted light from the daylight version.、Uh, you don't have to do that. You can start from scratch or just use adjustment layer to 
change the tone a little bit. I kind of like to just like repaint everything, um, because that kind of gives me a fresh start. Yeah, I also put in the warmer um tone under uh, for the background just to give myself a um the overall feeling of the mood. It's gonna be warmer. Um, and now I'm putting in some purple-ish, bluish skylight in. Um, the skylight is definitely much, um, uh, much softer than a daylight version. So instead of more cyan kind of blue color, this is more towards purple. I feel that's more close to um the sunset feeling. I did let some of the warm undertone coming through. I feel like having a little bit of warm and cool contrast, it kind of gives the image more depth. And adjusting the bottle color as well. I think when I start painting, I like to put everything, or I like to imagine the subject it's in shadow so i'm painting um the character without directly um without directly lit by the key light so it's like shadow ish color first so it gives me a general feeling how how the color will look like without the key light Now I'm painting a little bit shadow as usual. Compared to uh, the white hair, white fur part, the, the shadow color is, you can see it's a little bit warmer. So on a color picker, yeah, I just go slightly lower and maybe towards bright, and that's warmer, and find your find your shadow color. It doesn't have to be very accurate every time, but one thing to remember when you use the color picker is that um, um, uh, when you move a certain distance on the color picker, let's say for the white hair, uh, when it hit get, uh, it, when you get hit by the skylight, you move towards like the upper left corner a little bit. Um, you need to move the similar distance for the uh, brown hair part. Um, that don't make the lighting somewhat consistent, uh, if that makes sense. So each part of the local color on this character um, needs to have a similar kind of um, lighting changing. I don't know if I made that make myself clear, but let me know if you have question about this part. I did reduce the amount of the milk that's left in the bottle because if the gurgi is drinking the milk, during the day, I think by now it's probably empty, but let's just give it a half. In our reference color palette, um, the grass is definitely a bit warmer when it's get hit by the sunlight. That's during the sunset time. The grass is actually very warm. But where it's not hit by the sunset, um, by the sunlight, it's going to be much cooler. It's like towards like bluer a little bit.
I think it's important, like when we look at images online or when we're going out, observe the nature. Um, we're kind of taking like mental pictures of how the environment looks like, how the um, the colors looks like actually in real life. Um, that'll give us some some light, <laughs> some life experience, I guess. I'm adding a little bit more skylight. It's the same thing where it's facing upwards. It's going to lit by skylight a little bit more. So it's bluer, purpleish color. Adding a little bit of details on the form, like on the on his paws and yeah. I feel a lot of times when you're painting or you're just sculpting the form, it's actually very relaxing. Because during this time, you're just calculating um, where the light is coming from. We don't have to pay too much attention to it. Um, I feel like painting is just making an impression as long as roughly... Um, the idea is roughly there. It should be enough. You don't have to um, spend too much time to make make things perfect. I think the idea gets across when you put the mark down. That's just just right. I add a little bit of warm light from uh, from behind because I know I wanna um, the sunlight coming from his back. So we have a little backlit kind of um, lighting. But before we get to that, let's keep adjusting the um, the local colors for the for some of the details. You probably noticed I still switching between the um, black and white value and the normal color value, just to, just to check the values, see if the, um, the silhouette gets lost during, during the painting time. I know a lot of artists um, started, uh, would start their image with black and white thumbnails, which is awesome, I think it's a great way um, to make sure you have a good value structure um, for your paintings. I'm terrible at that. <laughs> I think painting directly in colors works for me. Um, but the downside is like my values get lost. Sometimes they get mushy and definitely, so definitely check your values throughout your painting process. Now let's paint in the sunlight. Again, the sunlight will be much warmer because it's sunset time compared to the daylight time. It's not as strong, but the color, um, the warmth is definitely more intense. Remember where your sunlight is coming from and only focus on the sunlight right now. Don't worry about the skylight. Don't worry about, don't worry about the shadows. So only worry about one light at a time. And right now you're just, you're just sculpting all the forms that's facing towards the sunlight. And also make sure you pay attention to how the light wraps around the form. Um, yeah, because um, 
when I started painting, sometimes I when it's backlit, I would just paint a like a strip of light. But that's that's making the image really flat because light actually falls off when, let's say, if it's a round form, the light falls off when the form changes. It's not like a directly cut off. I hope that makes sense. And because um, he's a dog, he's having some like hair. When the sunlight get lit, um, when the hair get lit from behind, it actually glows a little bit. So I would use a softer brush and just pick up a much brighter color, just to brushing a little bit loose hair. Give uh, it'll give a a little bit of fluffiness kind of feeling. And make sure your lighting is consistent throughout the forms. Because like my I I paint each um each color on a separate separate layer. Not each color. Um let, let's say like for the bright the the white hair part and the brown hair part, I keep them on separate different layers. So when you wanted to make the character believable, you have to make sure that lighting is consistent through um, the different hair part. They're adding more sunlight. When the sun hits the flower, it's a little bit warmer than the daylight situation as well. So instead of bright yellow, um, it's, this is now more of an orange tone. And I zoom in now quite a lot. Sorry if it's hard to watch. But it's very helpful for, for me to um, look at the image from far away. Usually, usually I just zoom out a little bit and see if the image works okay as a whole now we're painting the sunlight for smaller details to make the image have more harmony it's definitely very important to um, try out the intensity of the warmth and cool like how it contrasts with each other um, when I started this pile of grass it's actually very, very much towards blue um, you don't have to get the color right right away but it's important to make adjustment if something feels off to you and I changed the light direction a little bit, and now this is the final image. All right. Now I saved another PSD so we could start the night version. According to my reference image, I know I want my night sky very blue, much darker than right now. And I want a warm um, spotlight. I think that they'll look really nice, but we'll see. Yeah, first of all, I'm changing the background color to go towards where uh, what I'm thinking, what I had in mind. Everything will be darker. I just blocking all the colors. Again, you could use the neutral lighting PSD and start from there. Um, I was just using the sunset version and removing all the strong key light. So we could start from there. I 
After we decide the background over our color, and then now we just have to make the character's local color sit in within the environment better. So the skin, the white hair part will be much darker and towards blue, towards the background color. So on the color picker, you will be like、mm, selecting the local color and then shifting. Towards darker and cooler color, and at night the flower us is usually closed up. So just make a little bit change, adding some details and dots in there. I think as long as I was painting, I think I I wanted. I'll emphasize a little bit more on the storytelling side. I know we're just painting light, but we could have fun, right? <laughs> so I think by this point, his milk is probably all gone,、um, and we'll have an empty bottle. Maybe the bottle could have something else in there instead of the straw. So the straw will be throwing on the side. It's probably not great for the composition if you just put the straw randomly there, but yeah, why not? And now I wanted to have a little light source coming from the bottle, inside the bottle. I'm painting in a little bit environment light, the field light. That's purplish, bluish. Much darker. Keep darkening the background, but you know,、um, even though it's nighttime,、um, I wouldn't use black because、um, a while ago I tend to make everything too dark, and it's really hard to see. No matter for like if if you're making a print or or just showing online, you know, when it's super dark, it's Actually, it's just it it just doesn't look good. So actually, having a lot of cooler, darker、uh, light it helps the to to show the image better. So instead of going all the way to black, we just have a little bit more darker and cooler、um, colors. And yay! It's light box. Let's make a light box. Um, right now I'm actually changing my brush, uh, my brush mode into color dodge And opacity is a little bit lower, so when you brush in color, it kind of gives you a little bit、um, nice effect. I don't use this often,、um, but when you're using brush and the brush mode is on color dodge, definitely be very careful about it because it tends to go very bright very quick. It'll be like very washed out if you use it too much. So definitely tone down the、uh, opacity for the brush. When you're using it that way, and I know the bottle. I think at night,、um, the bottle will be much darker.、Um, I would paint in the much darker、uh, base color and then add light reflection on top. Again,、um, using reference definitely would help a lot. But right now we're just kind of trying to get the right impression of how a bottle looks like. Maybe have a little bit light reflection inside the bottle because it's glass. But we'll see. We'll see how that turns out.
when it's at night, um, the bottle actually, uh, the darks coming from what's coming behind um, in the environment. If it in the environment is much darker, you know, the bottle itself, it shows much darker. And all the light spot, it's coming from the light source inside the bottle. So we have, you will get a lot of like much brighter spotlight reflection. So this like very strong light and shadow contrast kind of gives us a better sense of feeling. This is um, a glass texture. It's very reflective. more spotlight, not spotlight, reflecting light. And if we have some more um, field light coming from uh, coming from above or coming from the front. That's how we get this reflect uh, reflection bluish light on the bottle. And now I'm painting, painting in the light effects under the chin. Because the light box is generating, it works as a light source and how the light um, reacts on his face, on this Corgi's face, it's very important to sell the quality of the lighting. So his nose is probably directly on, above the bottle. Um, that's why we get this very intense warm light. And now on top of his nose, we have the cooler skylight. So this warm and warmth and cool contrast would definitely help us to get a more uh, better sense of form. It seems just more three dimensional. I was thinking um, maybe around the eye area because it's like under light, maybe the the form changes, the light, uh, the eye area will be lit a little bit as well. But I don't know if I like that, how, how that look. It looks kind of creepy. And a lot of times if I, if I'm not sure uh, if that part is it looks okay or not, I would just leave it and start painting other other areas. And maybe come back later and see if that works better or or I or or, or I'll <laughs> I'll need to change it. Definitely take some more time to refine um, all the all the forms. Now I'm adding a little bit more intensity to the under light coming from the box, the light box. I'm trying to make it look softer too. I think the eye area because the nose is in the way. It should be actually in shadow, so I changed that part. The top of the year, because it's far away from the main light source, I feel it needs to be slightly darker in shadow, so it doesn't get too much um, contrast and won't attract too much attention. 
So our attention will be on the light box itself. Now the straw, because it's randomly, randomly put there to make it more believable, uh, we're kind of adding in the translucency uh, for the straw. You know, you just, when light hits through the plastic, it kind of um, brightened up the whole uh, straw because it's so thin. So uh, the straw color will be much brighter, much much warmer. I'm changing the expression a little bit. Refine his paw pads for a little bit just to give a better, more accurate color. And top of his nose might be a little bit shinier. Now coming back to the grass. Um, because grass is very thin and translucent, so it's definitely going to have those um, subsurface scattering effect. I will paint in the very uh, bright color where it's directly up or closest to the light source and then move shift towards a, a warmer and darker color and slowly trans transition transit to uh, to to merge within the rest of the grass. I think they'll be fun to have some glowing plants, but I don't want to make it too intense. So just a little bit of cool light, spotlight. I feel that'll add a little bit mysterious kind of feeling to it. It's completely unnecessary, but it's fun. Make sure when whenever you add a, a light, um, how the light reacts to the surrounding um, object. Even if it's just a little spotlight, um, if you add a little reflection on the object near near it, um, it will help sell the quality of the light. So it feels more realistic in a way. I'm not painting the background, but I like to suggest what's in the background by using bigger brush just to brushing um, the mood. <laughs> so you can tell it's just like kind of blurred grass. It's coming. Let's go back to the logo. Again, I'm using a soft brush with the uh, brush effects set on Color Dodge. Definitely tone down the opacity because it's going to be really intense. You don't want to directly paint a white dot as the sparkling light or whatever. Um, if you're using a pink color or more cyan, whatever, if you have a lower um, opacity and just just paint a couple times it'll really give you the nice feeling of the glowing uh, particles uh, 
a little final touch up. It did change, shift the, the hue of this, some of the particles for a little bit, just to have some variation. Uh, this is how it looks like. So we have daytime, sunset, and nighttime. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, download the file from my Gumroad link, um, the PSD file with the neutral lighting. And feel free to tag me on Instagram. I want to see your version as well. Thank you so much. Bye.